Hi, welcome back to another one of my videos. Today what I'm going to be doing is building a bean and pea frame uh, and preparing the soil ready for my peas and beans to be sowed. It's the 9th of April today um, and I'm hoping to get them sowed in the next sort of two or three weeks. I'm going to direct sow my beans and peas this year. Um, I have done um, sowing them at home in the past and then transplanting but this year I'm going to direct sow uh, and give it a go that way. So I'm going to be getting the frame ready for them and preparing the ground and then after I've done that I'm going to be sowing my extra long carrots uh, which I sowed last year and I'm going to give them another go this year. So that's the plan for today. Right, this is the beds where I'm going to be sowing my peas and beans. At the minute it's been dug over fairly well, but what I'm going to do now is throw in some compost uh, and a little bit of fertiliser and I'm going to dig it all in, uh, pull out any weeds that are remaining and just get it really nice and fine. I am adding the fertiliser that I've used in my previous videos, the six times natural fibrous fertiliser. A uh, thing to remember with peas and beans is they like a really rich soil so I'm going to be adding in a fair bit of compost and fertiliser and that's, uh, that's where we're going to start today, we're just preparing the soil and getting the soil good and ready for them. <laughs> Right, so I've dug this bed now as well as I can. Um, this area here of my allotment actually seems to be the worst soil that I've got on the whole plot. This here is really, really clayey um, and it's full of loads of weeds and stones. I've tried to pull out as many as I can, but obviously you're never gonna get all of them. So there's still some in there. Um, and it is a really heavy sort of clay soil, just this particular patch here. Further down the end there, doesn't seem to be problems really, but here it is a heavy clay soil. So I'm just gonna work with what I've got. Uh, it's not especially fine. When I'm planting the actual pea seeds, I will put them in some separate compost because um, they're not gonna obviously shoot up through heavy lumps of clay. Um, but considering the condition of this soil here, this is what I'm gonna go with today. I'm gonna construct the bean and pea frame now. Um, a couple of things to consider when putting up your pea and bean frame, pea and bean frame, and choosing the location is you don't want to sow your peas and beans in the same place that you sowed them last year. Uh, you wanna practice crop rotation with them. 
um, because they use a lot of nitrogen. They'll also fix nitrogen into the soil, so they'll be good for growing things um, the following year because they will put back into the soil nitrogen and fix soil issues, which is great for things that you grow there the following year. But yeah, practice crop rotation with peas and beans because it's always best with them to not grow them in the same site that you grew them last year. Last year I grew mine over there, so this year I've moved them to here. Uh, and what we're going to do now is pop up the frame, and for that I'm using bamboo canes, and I've got 15 of them, and I'm going to show you how I construct my, uh, construct my frame. Another very quick point to note, uh, I said I had a couple of things to say and then I spoke about crop rotation and I completely forgot to mention the other point, is when you are putting up the frame, you always want to do the frame before you sow the peas. If you sow the peas first or put the peas in first and then try and construct a frame around them, you're risking damaging the roots of the plant, um, which you don't want to do. So always put up the frame before you put your peas or beans in. And for my frame, like I said, I've got 15 bamboo canes. They are approximately 8 foot in length, and I'm going to create a two-row A-frame for them. And I'm going to start with a, one on each end and work my way down the row. I'm pushing them in fairly firmly. Um, I say I've probably got about 10 inches of the cane below the surface of the soil, just so they're in there nicely and firmly. And I've got approximately, I'd say about 12 inches between the canes. And between the rows here, I've got approximately two foot. Right, now I've got them all in, all I'm going to do is bend them together, like so, and just tie them together with some twine. So now we've got the basic shape of the frame. I've been treading on my soil a bit. I've been trying to avoid putting too much pressure on this foot because I don't want to compact that soil too much. But to lean in, I need to support myself and I would use a plank of wood to spread my weight out. But I haven't got a plank of wood to put down at the minute. So I'm just trying to not press down too firmly with this foot, but 
we've got the basic shape here but as you can see it's still really wobbly so what we need to do to give it a bit more strength a bit more uh, rigidity is to take the cane over there and we're going to pop it along the top of all of these so we take the uh, cane here and all we're going to do is pop it across the top making sure of course that it goes actually in between the cross of the uh, canes here So that's in now, and I'm just going to tie it in as well, just to uh, make it that little bit stronger. So as you can see now, what we've got is a much sturdier frame. Much sturdier than just having each individual pair on their own. Having them tied together like this, we have created a much sturdier frame. It's still got a bit of wobble at the top. <laughs> but the last thing I like to do, and you don't have to do this, not everyone does, but the last thing I like to do is take another cane for each side and I'm going to pop this one there the other one we'll do in a moment yeah and just this one will come to about there I'm just going to tie it in at each point just to create an even uh, better structure and strength And then the same on the other side, but opposite. So I've got that one starting low there and coming up high to here. This one, I'm gonna start low here, coming up high to there. And I say this bit, this tying in of these extra canes is not essential. I know a lot of people around here who just have the frame without the extra supports. Um, I used to do the frame without the extra supports and then somebody recommended to me to put in these extra lines here. And for me it's actually worked really well, it does make it that bit stronger. Um, and yeah, I always do my supports like this now. So here we have one finished p and bean frame. It's, uh, 
pretty sturdy now. I have trampled the earth. Um, like I say, there's no peas or anything growing in there now, which is uh, why I say get the frame in first before you sow anything. So, so that's in now. In the next couple of weeks, I will get the peas in and the beans. Um, I'm going to go run a beans and I've got some mange too and I've got some peas, garden peas. The runner beans will be fine just working their way up around the poles. For the peas and the mange too, I may make an added support with some twine and some netting. Uh, I usually use the plastic netting which I pick up in the pound store but this year I don't want to use that because it doesn't look very nice and I'm trying to reduce the amount of plastic I use on my pot anyway. So I'll probably use some twine and try and create some netting to give the peas and the mange to extra support. That is the bean frame. One job ticked off the list for today. And the next job is to do the, uh, the carrots. I've got the extra long carrots that I want to sow. So I think we'll uh, go and do them now. Get them in before it starts raining because this weather isn't looking great. <laughs> I don't know if you can see this, but I had to turn the camera on and try and capture it because I was very excited that I have tadpoles in my pond. I'm trying to use my hand to show you the stone where one of them is resting. I think you can just about see that. <laughs> Put the camera right up close. Because as all of you know, I was hoping for frog swan and tadpoles. And I've been having a little look in the pond and there is one there, and there's a couple more, but they're more camouflaged because they're against the black liner. But that little guy is sitting there on the stone, and I've counted a few now. So I'm hoping that they will survive and they will make their new home in my pond. And that will make me one very happy lady. <laughs> right, now back to the carrots <laughs> after that brief little uh, interruption there. Right, as some of you that have watched my previous videos will know, um, every year I always like to try and grow a few vegetables that are slightly different. Um, and by that I mean the ones for showing an exhibition. Um, there's a local village show a few miles away from me that always has a village flower show each July and I always like to grow a few things and enter a few things into their competitions just for fun really um, and one of the things I like to try and grow is carrots both stump rooted and long ones it's only my second year of doing this last year I entered some stump rooted ones and some long ones um, the stump rooted ones I got a second prize with <laughs> and uh, my long rooted ones <laughs> well I got a first prize, which is brilliant, but I got first prize for the most misshapen, odd vegetable. <laughs> so it didn't quite go to plan. Um, I grew them in this tub here, so they've got the long space for the roots and I can control the compost to make sure it's fine. What I did wrong last year is I transplanted my carrots. I started them off early to give them longer time to grow because this variety take up to four months to grow. So I started them early and I transplanted them. And then reading up afterwards, what I realized is that carrots don't like transplanting and it can cause them to fork. And with mine, it certainly caused them to fork. I didn't get long carrots. I got the most fantastically shaped carrots ever. <laughs> but I still won a fiver in prize money, so I can't really complain. <laughs> but this year I'd like to actually try and grow some proper long ones. Um, this part of the video may end up being shorter than I had planned purely because I think I'm running out of compost and I know I'm running out of battery power on this camera. So if it suddenly ends, I apologise. The variety I'm growing for long carrots are long new red, oh, get this right, new long intermediate, which are the best carrots if you want to grow long carrots. And I'm going to be growing them in this bucket here and uh, a few things to consider when planting carrots is you want to watch out for carrot fly which will burrow the, the flies will the female flies will land around the root and then lay their eggs and they'll burrow in and they will destroy the carrot you want to try and avoid that if possible 
Um, I've spoken about carrot fly in some of my previous videos, so I won't go into it in great detail today. What I will say is that with these ones, I'm not going to have to worry about carrot fly so much because carrot fly are low flying and they can't fly above about 60 centimetres in height. And this bucket is going to be just about tall enough to avoid all but the most stubborn carrot flies, so I'm not going to worry too much about carrot fly protection there. Um, I did a previous video, I can't remember which one it was, about growing carrots, but if you want to know more about how to avoid carrot fly, I think it's the uh, growing carrots, growing stump root carrots for exhibition video that I did last year. That's got some tips on carrot fly, so have a view of that one if you want to know more about that. But for now, I'm just going to get on with sowing these seeds and showing you how I do this. Right, so this bin here is just filled with normal builder's sharp sand. Completely right up to the top here. And what I'm going to do is use this piping here. I got it from uh, Wix or B&Q, one of the DIY stores. It's, as you can see, about I think it's about two and a half inches across. Um, and what I'm going to use do with it is just use it to bore. I don't want you there. I'm just going to use it to bore out some holes where I want to grow my carrots. And as you can see, it does take a fair bit of pressure to get down through the sand. And I'm doing mine in stages, but the sand is behaving and it is coming up in the tube, which is good because when it's uh, really dry, sometimes it doesn't. And then I have to get my hands down and try and pull it all out. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously I spoke too soon then because there's a little bit, probably only about that much left at the bottom I'm going to get my hand in manually and get it out I should be honest, is a bit of a pain. Right, so I'm pretty much down to the bottom there. There wasn't a lot of sand left in the bottom, thankfully. And now what I'm gonna do, taking at this compost, I am using John Inns, which obviously has got the added uh, nutrients. It's not always a great idea to add um, fertilizer and nutrients in with carrots because it can lead to them forking. Um, but the thing is, multi-purpose is often um, not as fine. John Inns is really fine and sandy, 
So that's going to be good in terms of trying to grow straight carrots. So that is why I'm using John In's compost. I know a lot of people will um, serious growers will create these fantastic compost mixes, which are perfectly sandy and perfectly balanced. But as I say, I'm only doing mine for a little bit of fun. So I'm just going to stick with my John In's compost. And I'm going to fill up this hole that I've created now. And then I'm going to plant the first seed. Yeah, see as you can see that is lovely and fine for carrots. Obviously taking out any big bits, stones or anything that's going to cause the carrots to fork. So that can go on the compost heap. So that's the first one done. And now I'm just going to pop a seed just in the top. To make a little hole in the centre of that compost, not too deep, just going up to about the first uh, joint there on my finger. And I'm going to stick three seeds in. And if more than one comes up, I will thin them to the uh, strongest seedling. So that's the first one planted. Now I'm going to do the rest of these. I'm hoping to fit probably about between 10 and 12 in this tub here. So that's the first one in. Let's get the rest done. Right, so that's the first two. What I'm going to do now is plant up the rest of these and then show you at the end how it looks because I'm sure you don't want to be watching me boring out a load of holes, filling them with compost and sticking seeds in them. I've shown you a couple of times how I'm doing it. So I'm going to get the rest of this tub done now, assuming I've got enough compost. If not, I'll get as much of the tub done as I can. Right, so as you can see, I have finished doing this now. I'm thoroughly covered in sand and compost and can I also just say for the camera that I do not advocate sticking your arms down through sharp sand in the way that I did. I did it last year and I've done it this year and I'll probably do it next year but you know it's called sharp sand for a reason and my arms near my elbows are now lovely and marked and red but I'll get over it <laughs> and hopefully the carrots will grow. Um, yeah, so they're all planted, I've done all the holes, even found a little bit of a uh, carrot from last year. <laughs> Stuck in the soil at the bottom there. But yeah, seeds are planted, carrots are in. Uh, I'm not going to water them today because the compost is already pretty damp uh, and there is rain forecast for later on today. If it was dry and the compost was dry, I would water them because it's important to keep carrots well watered throughout the season. Um, and now I'm just going to cross my fingers 
and hope they start to grow and that they grow a little bit straighter than they did last year. And uh, that is pretty much everything for today's video. So we've done the beans and the peas and the carrots. Or it sounds like a, a good Sunday roast accompaniment to me. Yeah, so that's today's video. Thank you for watching as always. Um, always appreciate the likes and the subscribers. Um, and do feel free to check me out on Instagram and Facebook as well. I'll put the links down in the description for you. Um, so yeah, any extra um, views on there would be great too. And there's other things that I do on there that I don't do on here too. So thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.